Hello everyone, welcome to uh, Translation Lives or Перевод Жив. And today, uh, together with my guest, Sarah Buzaji, I'm going to discuss uh, some issues of English punctuation that uh, confuse and torture many uh, Russian-speaking translators who work uh, out of Russian into English. Раз, раз. Перевод жив. Uh, Sarah is a professional translator, editor, quality manager, and she's based in the United States. For those of you who uh, haven't uh, watched our previous episode, uh, if you haven't done it, uh, you should definitely uh, before continuing or after watching this uh, episode. The theme of Punctuation, of course, is vast. We're not going to even try to cover everything or everything of interest, but uh, we agreed to talk about a few specific items of usage that are come up in any written text and that can be confusing, especially to someone who comes uh, from a Russian background. You know, in Russian, we have some pretty strict uh, and sometimes pretty arcane rules of punctuation that we spend many years uh, of high school studying and some people continue doing that later on but even when you believe that you're fairly certain of what uh, goes on in the russian language uh, when you approach english you realize that the rules many rules are different and this is not really taught uh, in russian schools where they teach english or i believe at uh, uh, translation and interpretation schools or faculties and I don't even know uh, if punctuation is really taught in the United States, for example, at, in high school. What I can say about my general, you know, not all the stereotypes about American educational system are true, but there, there are some, some truths to um, lack of education. I didn't really learn grammar until I started learning foreign languages. Like, I, I couldn't have told you what a subject verb noun was. Um, and I think that has to do with some peculiarities of my school system, but also, yeah, punctuation. I think that we don't <clears throat> learn a lot of this. I think it comes, I don't think we have a set topics on it. I think it comes as people revise your papers or edit, you know, it gets talked about in English class some. But yeah, it's tricky because there's a lot of variation within, you know, U.S. English. There's different style guides that people adhere to, and then there's variation between British English and U.S. English, and then there's areas where the commas are subjective or preferential, like, you know, so I can see, yes, it is uh, tricky for us, let alone someone learning a second language. Let's jump right in. Uh, number one, commas with direct addresses, what we would call in Russian обращение. So when mm -hmm. you have, when, you, when, when the writer of the text addresses someone uh, by their name, for example, uh, like, thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, as we do in Russian, uh, put commas before and after a direct address? Um, yes, they should be there. I will say that interesting usage note in slightly less formal emails, even business emails, it feels somewhat overly formal to put the comma after the hi before hello, before the name, say. Um, so I see people omitting that a lot. It just you know regular usage, but to be safe, you could you should put one there if you're not sure. So this is just this is important. So even if it's something very short like "Hi, John," uh, at the beginning of uh, uh, an email, uh, what you indeed what you typically see is "Hi, no comma John comma and then everything else. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. technically, uh, there should be a comma before John as well. "Hi, comma John." Comma. Yes. Yes, and I, I will often start out that way, but if I see that the other person is not using the comma there, <laughs> I feel that I am being, you know, too much of a stickler, so sometimes I will then omit it. But. Now, but seems to be to work and works pretty much like the Russian no. And in Russian, one of the... In the Russian punctuation, one of the few sort of hard and fast rules is that there's always a comma before a no. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter if not separates clauses like 
мы пришли, но они не пришли, or if it just separates members of the same clause. Я устал, но доволен. And oftentimes we try to put a comma before, but oftentimes we get criticized randomly by people or by automatic spell checkers, and we are very confused. We don't know where to go. So, do we or do we not need a comma before but? Um, poor uh, harassed uh, Russian writers. Um, yes, you do need it for an independent clause, but that seems easy. So, I arrived, comma, but he wasn't home, say, yes? So, you do need one there. And then... If we're talking about two different clauses with two different subjects, I yes. arrived, right. comma, but he wasn't there. Yes, we, we definitely want one there. Um, now, the rule is if it's the same subject, but like, you know, different, I arrived, but didn't call out or but didn't knock, say, then you don't need one. But I feel like this is one of those situations where people will also introduce the comma for preferential reasons clarity syntax i don't know so i you don't need it then but you can use it at least i have there are situations where i would use it um so a comma before a but is not really an eyesore in my it is not it doesn't hit me the same way that some of the other comma issues does Do but you, uh, to be on the safe side maybe just keep it to or where but separates different clauses right if you got a short sentence and you have the same subject and you're wavering back and forth you can omit What about and, if and separates different clauses? Like, for example, I came and they were very happy to see me. Would you need a comma before and? Uh, yes. Again, that's one of the things that I think you see people omitting sometimes, but I think to be on the safe side, you, you want it separate in different clauses. Mm -hmm. One uh, typical usage that's different and... I'm talking to you there, listening to us, Russian speakers. It's different from uh, English usage, uh, even if some people who are lazy with their Russian punctuation sometimes don't seem to realize that, is that when we in Russian begin a sentence with um, an adverbial modifier of time or place, обстоятельства места, времени, like вчера, в прошлом году, в прошлом веке, Um, uh, we don't need uh, any punctuation. It's just, you know, it's a verbal modifier that's at the beginning of a sentence. It's not a vodne slovo, it's not a clause or any kind of a abarot. Uh, but you do notice that almost on a regular basis, these adverbal modifiers are separated from the rest of the sentence with a comma in English. Uh, Could you elaborate? Is it uh, mandatory? Is it um, optional? In, in good writing, it's mandatory. Um, you know, obviously not at the end of the sentence, but yes, in the front of the sentence that the adverb modifier should be set off with a comma. Um, I think that it, depending on your institution or style guide, there might be some wiggle room if it's a single word. Like I was looking at some article where, If it was a, sing a single word, say yesterday, you know, I was looking at an article, I think it was some university where they were saying, you know, it can seem, again, overly stuffy or, you know, excessive to put a comma after yesterday, but the rules say that you should, and so, you know, easier to follow something consistently than to try to figure out where you might have some wiggle room. And the same applies to places, right? Mm-hmm. In, Moscow, in, in Moscow, in New York, yada yada. Now, the somewhat dreadful question of dashes. Oh no, oh, no I knew you were going to ask me about this. A dash is a tire. And, mm -hmm. you know, not to, uh, not to sort of imply that Russian speakers are all up to date with their Russian punctuation, I can tell you that many Russian speakers with uh, uh, relevant education even are, are hazy on the difference between uh, defis, which is a hyphen, and the tire, 
which is a dash, not to mention uh, the distinction between the N dash and the M dash. I first mm -hmm. uh, even learned about the existence of these two different signs when I started working for um, a publisher. Uh, so uh, there was more uh, of a focus on the exact layout. Uh, just for a quick uh, for a quick reference, the n dash n as in no um, is the somewhat shorter dash. Mm -hmm. uh, the m dash m as in mama is the longer dash. The reason they are called n dashes and m dashes is because the width of the letter n is shorter than the width of the letter m. I learned that only recently, and I. Can't believe I didn't know that before. <laughs> yeah. Well, you live in the mm -hmm. mostly in Russian. We see n, the shorter dashes uh, mm -hmm. used for everything, and except in some very specific cases, basically when this dash separates like numbers uh, in uh, date intervals, for example, nineteen forty to nineteen forty four, for example, mm -hmm. uh, the dash in Russian is always preceded and followed by a space. Um, in English, I see sometimes n dashes used, sometimes m dashes used, sometimes with spaces uh, before and after, sometimes without. So, can you discern any patterns here? And I also believe that you uh, have some complaints about how Russian speakers use uh, dashes in general when they write. I would call it a, a comment or a, 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 a note rather than a complaint. Yes, um, no, it's a mess. Um, we don't do it um, correctly or consistently. So I follow a lot the Chicago manual style. So per Chicago manual style for US English, you're using the N dash and you're not putting spaces around them. So like 1914 to 1918, there's going to be an N dash without spaces. Okay. Um, the M dash used similarly as a comma or a parentheses in to like, you know, introduce a new phrase or a, a, like they're pointing out that it's oftentimes used for more emphasis, like a, a twist or a turn or a, a break in sequence. Um, again, Chicago manual style has no spaces there, but um, this is a fun um, uh, comment that I found. Spacing around an M dash varies. Most newspapers insert a space before and after the dash, and many popular magazines do the same, but most books and journals omit spacing, closing whatever comes before and after the M dash right up next to it. So it's just like, it depends is the answer um, for, for M dashes a lot. Um, so it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit chaotic. But uh, based on this comment, uh, let me interrupt you, sorry. Mm -hmm. Based on this comment, uh, and based on, I think, what I've seen, it, does it appear that using an M dash without uh, spaces before and after is more uh, literary, so to speak, is more associated with literature rather than other? I would, that's, yes, that is a good point. I would say, so I can tell you the way that I generally, if I'm going to use an M dash, I will put spaces around it to to indicate, you know, a break. Um, I have to admit there's limited consistency with the way that I use M and N dashes, so I was afraid of this comment. But I will say I, a good general approach for doing US English would be to not have spaces around the N dash for the numbers and so forth, and then to add spaces for the M dash. I think that's a fair approach. So, and then what I was gonna say about the use of M dashes is for, um, more formal writing, I would avoid them. I think that they are used quite normally in Russian formal writing, the M dash, yeah? Mm -hmm. In more formal writing, I would just use a comma if you feel like using a dash. Well, formal writing. If you are writing, you know, anything academic or legal or just normal, of normal business formality, you can always, you can't go wrong using a comma to set off. Dashes are more treacherous a more treacherous yes it's, it's not like a you can never or, or they're, and they're never appropriate but and i don't think that not a lot of it's not going to read as a uh mistake so much as a stylistic difference so it's more stylistically appropriate to use the comma there where you would 
moving on the mm -hmm. oxford comma and uh correct me there so the oxford comma to me is just um the the comma that goes before and uh before the last uh, item in an enumeration if you have yes. three or more items that would be adnarodny chleny in russian then the, the the rules of russian penetration say if you have an e before the last item there mm -hmm. must never be a comma uh нам в гости пришли петя запятая миша и маша перед ними there would be no uh, comma before uh, this e before this and but the oxford comma in english uh, is used specifically in this situation it uh, is put before and uh, that precedes the last member of an enumeration and yes. i believe the question is do we use it do we not use it because in some instances we see that it's not used in some instances it is used so what's all this then <laughs> what's all this then uh the american speaking world or the american speaking world i forget Forgive me. The English-speaking world has not reached a um, any consensus about this. I th the Oxford comma is more common in the U.S. It seems than in England, which is confusing because I associate Oxford with England. But um, I, if you have a choice, I would always use it because it prevents confusion. I mean, there's times when it there's no I I don't to the life of me I cannot understand why. Anybody would be against the Oxford comma if given the choice, because it it only helps clarify things. Mm -hmm. But it's not, uh, but it's not used when we have only two. No. If you have, if you've got two items, this is something that I see a lot. People will separate two items with a comma, and I'm always just left abruptly at the end of a sentence because I am expecting it to go on, and it, you know, and um, so I would always use an and in that circumstance if it is. Clear, impossible to do so. But you said that the Oxford comma can be uh, can be a, a good thing because um, it uh, eliminates uncertainty. Can you explain? How about you say like for whatever weird situations happened, you had uh, there were pilots, Russians, and Americans. If I have pilots, comma, first one should be singular: pilots, Russians, and Americans. So yes. if Russians and Americans are pilots, then you would have a comma after pilots but not before and yes. if there are three distinct uh items in the same list so pir uh, pirates uh, <laughs> pirates or pilots uh, as distinct from russians and as distinct from americans then you would have a comma before and as well yeah uh, and uh, i think yeah uh in, in russian you could technically yes be confused and would have to judge from the context if mm -hmm. in a similar situation because you wouldn't have a, a comma either way uh, when we use uh, quotation marks if you uh, if you have a, a phrase let's say that's a direct speech and it's a phrase which um, is supposed to end with a period mm -hmm. uh, um, and you have a dot or a comma uh, depending on you know where what the case may be uh, in in russian that uh, dot or comma always goes after the closing um, quotation mark mm -hmm. you know if it's the end of the sentence then it's a, it's a, it's a full stop it's a, it's a period он сказал двоеточие кавычки мы пришли домой кавычки точка or мы пришли домой кавычки запятая тире сказал он uh, what you see in English is oftentimes that these uh, commas and periods are inside uh, the quotation marks. So mm -hmm. they come before the closing quotation mark. Sometimes it is not the case. So why? Oh, here we have a difference between the British and American ways as before. So US style, pretty common, also Chicago manual of style has, you know, some whole list about it, but um, that periods and commas will always go within the quotation marks, even if it's a phrase at the end of the sentence, even if it's just, you know, a phrase in quotation marks in the middle of the sentence and you have 
Even if it's a word. Even if it's a word. Now, again, this is where people people might get a little loosey-goosey if you have, I don't know, visually, if it looks odd, say, in the middle of a sentence, you've got a whole bunch of words in quotes, although that might look odd, too. So there might be some area for interpretation there, but generally, American English style, those should go inside. And generally, UK style, periods and commas outside the quotation marks. So in the US English, uh, wherever we use quotation marks, we can safely put the comma or the period inside the quotation marks. Yes. Even if it's just a word inside a phrase, like for yes. example, uh, they were called many names, like friends, comma, quotation mark, mm -hmm. uh, allies, comma, quotation mark, mm -hmm. and, you know, and so forth, whatever the, the case may be. Uh, let's, let me ask you, as somebody who edits uh, translations out of Russian into English a lot, and many of these translations would be uh, done by native speakers of Russian, what are some of the most annoying or typical mistakes that Russian translators make, apart from those that we've already mentioned? Yeah. So, I mean, the uh, one that creates much confusion with the commas is the one we already mentioned with using a comma in place of and. Okay, let's let's pause here because this is interesting. So it's like, I don't know, we need blankets, comma, tools. Yes, period. And then I'm just, what? What happened? I'm at the end of a sentence and I... Um... Instead of saying blankets and tools, and yes. no punctuation. Yeah. This is, I think, not an issue of punctuation per se, but of style, right? Because, I mean, technically they are not breaking any rules here. Okay, I'm not sure. I'll, we'll have to think about what, what category it falls into, but it is um, not something that I would ever write. But this is a it's really... Confusing. Interesting observation because I think that reflects. I, I think in good Russian, uh, we really want that e between two things. It mm -hmm. sounds very weird to say "нужны инструменты, деньги" or whatever, unless, uh, of course, it's in literature and you're trying to recreate truncated style or the person not finishing a sentence or mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. that. But I think mm -hmm. it does happen a lot in more bureaucratic. Well, this is what I'm, it's a, what I deal with a lot is bureaucratic stuff. So listening it, you might think, well, it sounds a, a little off in Russian, but it makes sense. It seems to sound more off to me in English because I would never leave it that way, but it seems fine to, and it makes sense if you're, you bureaucratic language, you don't want to change too much. So, but no, it is jarring and it doesn't, doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so the same thing applies to uh, lists of three and more. Uh, items mm -hmm. there should be mm -hmm. an and before the last one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as i would argue in good russian uh, unless you uh, are aiming for a specific stylistic effect but mm -hmm. it's not really okay in english to just say something 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 okay uh, mm -hmm. some other um so for example say you have the sentence in russian like spisak izmenenie what was it um introduced to so like changes introduced to the document right so you're gonna изменения внесенные в документ right so you would put a comma after um изменения yeah yes uh, or to be more uh, correct внесенные в документ would be причастный оборот mm -hmm. in participial phrase if you will yeah. mm -hmm. and all other things being equal uh, it requires a comma before and after it Изменения, запятая, внесенные в документ, запятая, были одобрены. Something like that. Right. So in English, if you've got the past participle phrase that is, the info is essential, the info is defining, then you don't use a comma. So um, if you're talking about changes... Um, changes introduced to the document were approved, yeah, yeah. you don't yes. need any commas. No, and it looks weird. Um, I'm trying, just trying to think of it how changes could be non-essential but yeah basically if it's a defining phrase then you don't want to use it in that case okay uh anything else uh you had some comments about please oh yes um don't use a comma after it or before yes in russian the rule is to have a comma before and after пожалуйста no matter what mm -hmm. comma, пожалуйста, comma, mm -hmm. but in english 
No commas before or after, please. Anything uh -huh. else? Nope, I can't think of anything else. Thank you so much. I uh -huh. am positive that this has been revealing to many people uh, who are active in this field and who have been watching and listening. And I hope that if you have more questions about the stuff that we could discuss or any additional comments, feel free to um, add them um, in the comment section below this video and we'll be happy to respond. Thank you so much for your time, Sarah. Sure, yes, and I hope it was helpful and if anything it should show how annoying the differences between US and UK English are and I'm sorry, it's confusing for us as well.